Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Elena Giannini, and I'm the Learning and Development Focal Point at the Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action. I'm here today with my wonderful colleagues, Katie Robertson and Angelisa Diveni, um, to talk to you through the new microsite that has been set up within the Alliance website on strengthening capacity of child protection in humanitarian actions, practitioner to respond in times of COVID-19. Um, we would like you to ignore for the time being the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen because that will be made available to you when the strategy session starts a bit later uh, today in about 30 minutes. I will leave like the floor to Angelisa Diveni, Capacity Building Coordinator working with us at the LND Working Group, like to chaperone us through the microsite. Angelisa, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Um, as Elna mentioned, my name is Angelisa Diveni, and I am happy to be the project coordinator for the USAID B Bureau of Humanitarian Assistance funded Strengthening Capacity of CPHA Practitioners to Respond in Times of COVID-19. So we're going to start this session with a bit of a different icebreaker. So this is a word scramble. So if you can type in the chat, if you're able to rearrange the letters in these four different options for a child protection term. So let me know if anyone is able to get them. So I can start giving hints if we have any issues. I understand this is a bit difficult. Oh, we've got one. So we have prevention from Aries. Yes, number one is prevention. So. Up oh, case management, that is number three for case management. Oh, it's the same person as well. Okay, psychosocial, yes. Susan has psychosocial for number two. And then number four is a bit difficult. It's a group of people that um, are, are very essential in, in child protection, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's see if anyone can get that one. It's two longer words. Community volunteers, nor is correct. Great job, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed a bit of a, a refresher icebreaker. Don't worry if you, you couldn't get them. I know we went rather fast. So um, we can head on to the next screen now. So the LD Working Group is sharing new resources to better equip child protection and humanitarian action practitioners to adapt child protection programming in the context of COVID-19 and other infectious disease outbreaks. So just to give you an overview of all of the things that are available with this project that we are very excited to be launching, we have nine learning modules, which include facilitator guides, PowerPoints, and then other activities and handouts to facilitate trainings, 10 learning tools. So these are tip sheets, learning videos, um, awareness raising posters, different things that practitioners can grab and go to um, disseminate to their teams. We have a MOOC, so an online course that has been moderated for a few weeks and now is going to transition to unmoderated, which is available in Spanish and English. We also have an online learning series. This is, that's about using digital platforms for remote programming safely, which I'll touch on in a little bit. And we also had a webinar series that was a six part session all about the different adaptations that were made in child protection to adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic. We can go to the next slide. So these are the list of the learning modules. I'm gonna go through them more closely when we actually look at our microsite that we're launching. Um, but these are the nine that we have available. As you can see, we have ones on case management, two on CAFAG, one that is actually for community volunteers to use, and then two relating to child protection and health, as well as MHPSS and a general module to deliver training remotely. And then these are some of our learning tools. So we have, um, different learning videos that you can use as, as well as different sort of handouts. So um, case management via phone tip sheets and different things such as that. Um, and then now I think I will share my screen just to show you the website itself because I think that might be the best way for us to go through everything. So I hope everyone can see my screen okay. Please let me know if you can't. So we will be sharing this link with everybody. This is available on the Alliance website. So as you can see, these are the resources. They are structured into learning modules, learning tools, online learning series and webinars. So if you click any of these icons, it will bring you down to that section in the website. It's a very short microsite. So you could also scroll as well. 
We also have a link here to the Google Drive with all of the resources. So I'm just going to give you a very quick little um, elevator pitch of the modules, and then we can take questions from people. So we have our first module, which is delivering training remotely, which is just like it sounds, it's a module to um, better equip CPHA practitioners to deliver training remotely. So while we were all giving our own crash courses ourselves, you know, when the pandemic started, now we have an actual operational training that people can use, as well as a tip sheet that goes with that and the different learning videos. So I'd mentioned this earlier about different platforms and apps. So the idea of these videos is that it gives you a little tutorial about the safety features around the apps so that you know um, when you're having a scheduled meeting, say you want to meet with, with a child, you have, you know, on Zoom, what are the safety features that I can put in place? And so you can make sure that you have some cybersecurity as well. So those resources, they're not, they're not how to's for all of the online platforms, how to do Zoom per se, but it's how to how to do it within the within the context of child protection programming or child protection meeting. Then we have two modules on case management, remote case management more specifically. So we have transitioning to remote case management, and that one is designed for coordinators, managers, technical advisors for case management programs. So it's the concept of how do we make this transition? We've been doing case management in person for so long. Now with the pandemic and you know other ideas involved, how can we how can we transition that to being to being remote? So we have a tip sheet with that as well as a learning video. And then we also have case management via phone, which that's our more how to for practitioners. So the really great thing about both of these resources is that it comes with a case management via phone learning video. So it goes through, this is a screen grab actually of the, of the learning video that we use. And it, it goes through a caseworker and her experience with a family doing remote case management. And so it shows the presenting problem, the child protection risk, and then how that caseworker ends up mitigating that situation all while, while being remote and not actually seeing the family in person. So I think this is a really great module, especially because it doesn't just show the presenting problem, but it actually shows, oh, I'm so sorry. I am going to reshare. I think I clicked on a Zoom message. Am I having? We still see it. Oh, you still see it? Okay, let me do this again. I wasn't sure if it went off my screen. Okay, I think we're back. So it actually shows you the practical ways to deal with case management via phone and, and can show workers how you can go about doing that. And then we have two modules on COFAC, so children associated with armed forces and armed groups. We have one on program continuity, the concepts being how do we continue programming when COVID is, is happening? You know, restriction is limit, movement is restricted and it's it's difficult to, to have a lot of reintegration right now. So how can um, coordinators and managers, how can they really advocate for program continuity during COVID-19? The second COFAG module is again, similar to case management where it is for officers, CPHA practitioners, managers and coordinators involved in programming for COFAG. So this is again, um, a sort of how to and helpful tips about how to be able to do COFAG programming within the context of COVID-19. And as you can see, as I, I could have mentioned earlier, all of the resources are, are available or will shortly be available within the next two weeks in English, French, Sp Spanish, and Arabic. So if you click these links, you'll be able to, resource, to um, access all of those resources. Our next module is supporting children, families, and communities during COVID-19. So when we were developing this module, we've coined it the Community Volunteers Package, and that's because it is designed for community volunteers. So as we know, during the pandemic, community volunteers took an immense step up when it came to child protection, when a lot of other workers were not able to get into the field into a lot of remote locations. So this is about strengthening their capacity to support basic child protection. And this is meant to be a very interactive module. So we don't have a PowerPoint. It's not meant to be as lecture-based. It's a very interactive sort of training module to make sure that community volunteers have the support that they need and the training that that, that is needed to be able to support basic child protection. And we have a few different um, learning tools and awareness raising sort of posters and things that, are, that can be helpful to community volunteers and their surrounding communities to disseminate as well. And then our next two modules center more around child protection and health within the context of COVID-19. So this module is preventing family separation and maintaining family unity during COVID-19. And it's designed to equip child protection staff to prevent and respond to family separation during quarantine, isolation, treat, and in treatment in coordination with health actors. So what this tackles is basically if a, if a caregiver contracts COVID-19, 
what is that concern? What are the child protection risks for the for the child? Are we going to how are we going to work to maintain family unity and try not to separate this family as much as possible? So it's it's going through that in terms of working within the health the health system and and um, delineating um, how to work on these things so that we can prevent family separation as much as possible, even in the case of COVID nineteen in responding to quarantine, isolation, treatment, things like that. Our second health module is related to child protection mainstreaming in health facilities during COVID-19. So um, as we know, um, child protection faced a lot of concerns during the COVID-19 pandemic because it wasn't always deemed as essential services by the government. So one of the things that the mainstreaming health facilities um, concept can do is that it can really make sure that child protection is integrated into these life-saving health facility um, materials so that that they um, they can keep going during the pandemic as well. And when there's other ideas. So the idea of mainstreaming child protection and health is addressed in this module. And the interesting thing about this module is that it, it really talks about the nexus between health and child protection. So it's designed for child protection practitioners to deliver this to health partners. So again, it's it's creating that, um, that network of collaboration and working together to mainstream child protection in health facilities. So health actors know how to refer to child protection workers and vice versa. And then I touched a little bit on the MOOC already. Um, this has been launched a few months prior. And so it's available if anyone is interested in taking it. Like I said, it's being transitioned to be unmoderated now. So you can take it at your leisure. And it is titled Protection, Protecting Children During the COVID-19 Pandemic, Adapting Child Protection Programming. And it is available in English and Spanish. And these are some of the learning tools. I had talked about a bit of them earlier. So different learning videos and tip sheets we have a risk of school closures videos, which goes through four different case studies of different children. And it goes through their story of how the pandemic has affected them and the different child protection risks that have been heightened now that the pandemic is happening. So those are really great animated videos that you could use with your team to sort of discuss um, how do you mitigate these new risk factors with the pandemic and, and how, do you, how do you work around them and, and create more protective factors as well. And then as I also mentioned prior, we had run a six part webinar series so the whole concept of the webinar was about adaptations during COVID-19 with each of these, these six areas. So case management, life skills, child protection and education in emergencies programming, awareness raising, COFAG programming, and mainstreaming child protection in health facilities. So these were panel discussions where we had, we had different child protection specialists and then um, other people in the health sector for our mainstreaming talk about how did they adapt COVID-19 during COVID-19, their programming and what were the lessons learned, what were the challenges, and, and what do they recommend now, knowing what they know, you know, a year and a half on from this pandemic. So those are all really interesting. If you're if you're interested to see more, you can click on them. They're all available with subtitles in all four languages, and they will also be released as podcasts as well in Arabic, French, Spanish, and English. And so um, I talked a little bit about our learning series, which I had discussed before about the online platform. So, so how, do we, how do we do child protection programming within these platforms? What should I know as a child protection practitioner when I'm, when I'm scheduling a meeting with somebody or I'm scheduling a programming session on Signal or WhatsApp or Google Meet? So these sort of give you um, a bit of an idea of the protection features that are available in terms of security when you're, when you're operating on those apps. So those are also great animated videos to check out. This is a um, a screen grab. I won't play it for for lack of sound, but you could um, you could check them out on the website as well. And then the last module, which will be coming live next week, is about promoting mental health and psychosocial well being of children during COVID nineteen. So the aim of the module is to prepare frontline psychosocial support officers to safely deliver MHPSS services in the context of COVID nineteen. And so it's it's basically just exactly as it says about strengthening that capacity for CPHA practitioners, how do we do MHPSS when we might be remote from children and families and, and how can we go about doing that? So that's the bulk of the resources. As I had said, I will leave this screen up for a moment because you can see if you have any questions, you can reach out to the LD working group. Ellen and Katie have worked tirelessly over this year to, to really make these wonderful resources and to be able to disseminate them. And we are all very excited to begin doing that. And um, at this point, I think we can just take questions from the chat. So thank you. 
Um, thank you, Angelisa. I think while we wait maybe for chats, for uh, questions to come through, if there are any, like I just wanted to thank you and Michelle Van Aken from Plan International in particular, as well as all the other colleagues from the working groups and task forces within the Alliance and their members, which have joined us in the development of uh, these resources it has been a mighty effort, but eventually we managed to plow through this. And um, yes, so thank you very much. Sorry if we have been uh, molesting you with lots of requests, but it has been a journey. And um, thanks to the effort of Michelle and Angelisa, we finally have like all of these lives. I will emphasize again with all of these resources will be soon available in all of those languages and while they're very much relevant to the COVID-19 context, I think they may be very useful in other infectious diseases outbreak context where uh, you sort of have a similar spread of the disease which goes from human to human uh, as the as the as the COVID-19, but they may also be really useful where you have a lack, lack of access type of context. So you know, dig in, dig on the website, try and find what's useful for your particular context. Um, Ah, I see that uh, maybe there is a comment in the chat. One question I have, Angela, is that maybe if we want to, again, like an, uh, without upsetting production here, like would it be feasible to share maybe one of the tools just uh, so that we show like the main outlook of one? Sorry, it just came to mind now as you were talking. So if we can try and do that, and I'll read the comment from Mr. Yao in the chat in the meantime. Yao you like says- to share the video, Elena? Um, maybe the video is complex because of um, yes. uh, of the audio, but one of the tools I was thinking, one of the tip sheets, per, for example, just to give a flavor of what they look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. I cannot think of one from the top of my head because... No, now I'm trying to find one. Um, I think the stigma do's and don'ts one would be really good to share. Okay, let me just find that for a moment. Wonderful, Angelisa, you focus on that. I'll take Mr. Yao's comment here, which, who says, I really appreciate the video call program, but in Africa, you may be working in a remote place where you cannot have internet connection. What can you advise in these cases? <laughs> it's the question of the year, I guess, <laughs> or actually of the last two years. I think in, um, I think in, um, in a, some of like these models, like we have taken in considerations, like these limitations, um, and we have tried, like strived, like to provide like some inputs, like on those aspects. Um, now, clearly, it depends from topics to topic. Like some of these models are not necessarily like related to having internet access or not. They're just useful in this type of settings. Um, so we'll have to bear, like um, be creative, like whenever like there is that impossibility to access, uh, um, to access this uh, internet appropriately in terms of bandwidth. I think we also have like some webinars, like actually, sorry, no, I don't think we have webinars like on the website, which are on capacity, oh, sorry, on a programmatic adaptations on variety of topics, life skills, case management, CAFAC, et cetera. And not all of them are presenting necessarily only activities that can be done through the internet. So you wanna get like on those webinars and listen to those examples from those uh, practitioners and do write to us in case you're stuck and you need additional support. Um, Yes, actually, like I think, and I, um, Michelle help me before I give the floor, Angelisa, like for those that cannot access the resources online, we have actually uh, looking at 
some sort of like hardware support, right? Am I right, Michelle? Yes. So um, we are actually currently in the process. So in context where access to internet may be a little challenging, we are actually ordering around 500 USBs to load up with all of the resources that have been developed, and we will be shipping them um, to humanitarian context globally. Um, so we'll be, I'm trying to do the math in my head in terms of how many contexts that would be and how many USBs per context, but so that does, I'm not going to bother. It's seven in the morning here, so that's not going to end up working for me. <laughs> um, but so we are going to be shipping USBs that have the resources on them um, globally. Uh, so that does mean that um, in offices where, in contexts where PLAN is operating, we would be shipping them to PLAN child protection specialists um, for them to then share with the CPAOR uh, and with the other child protection partners so that everyone can have access to these resources, whether or not they have access to internet. Um, so that is something that we will be doing with, especially with the face-to-face -face modules. Um, and we're gonna try to upload as much of the associated resources as well. So obviously our face-to-face -face modules uh, with the facilitator guides, the learning tools, the PowerPoints will, will be on there. And then we're also looking at uploading, um, in addition to that, some of the webinars that we've done already can, be, can go on there so that you can even have those available for you. Um, so as much of the resources as possible that can fit on a USB drive. But yes, so that will be a great option for those who maybe can't always access internet. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa, did I leave anything out? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> and we've been trying to have it in mind that we would have the, the resources be accessible. So even if you're able to just download it when you do have internet and then be able to access it, we've tried not to make it that there's a bunch of links to, to online sites and different things like that. So for the most part, we've tried to think about it in an offline function as well. And people would be able to, to download the facilitator guides and the PowerPoints and then just have the handouts that they need. And for most modules, that would be, that would be sufficient to be able to run them offline. Yeah, just one addition, maybe like all the modules have got have got both face to face and remote delivery instructions. So they have been built, I think, with the exception of the volunteers package, like all can be delivered in a face to face setting or remotely. So to answer also that need for something to be widespread, etc. Um, and yes, Angelisa is showing one of the tools, which is the do's and don'ts in fighting COVID-19 stigma. And as you see, it's a very simple layout. It's a couple of pages, fairly easy to print like or to show also like on a screen uh, if you're using it like that way and you want to be environmental friendly. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very easy to read. And there are many tools like this, so I do suggest like exploring the, the microsite like and the resources. And if you do have any questions, you come back to us at learning at alliancecpha.org, like with any questions you have. We are truly always available to answer any questions. So we really encourage um, everyone to get in touch. Um, that, that's it from myself, Angelis. I don't know if you have like any, if we have any final thoughts in the chats or if we're good to go. I think we should be good. I mean, as you mentioned before, while this is a, a resource for the COVID-19 pandemic, remote child protection work, remote case management, that's becoming more common now with people in hard to reach areas as well. So it, this, this really can be used, this module, not just in the context of COVID-19, but if you're using more remote programming and different things like that, these tip sheets and learning modules can be really helpful. So I think that's, that's the last message that I have. So um, thank you, that's it for me. Thanks, Angelisa. Thanks, Michelle, for popping in like, and uh, for sorting some doubts. Thanks, Katie. And again, thanks to all of those that were involved like, in the development of all these resources. We really hope they're useful to those on the ground.